the story takes place in a utopian setting. In this world, being single is illegal. David, the hero of this movie, encounters such a situation. His wife cheats on him and forms a couple with another person. Therefore, he is left single to deal with this situation. David and many others like him are sent to a hotel. David also brought a dog to keep him company. Or more accurately, his brother. His brother came here a few years ago, but he didn't make it to find a partner within 45 days. People here adhere strictly to the rules. With John being a prime example, he is consumed by thoughts of escape from the moment he arrives, striving to forge connections with others. He actively shares his love story, dating preferences, habits, personality traits, and more, all motivated by the fear of transformation into an animal. To circumvent this fate, John devises a deceitful scheme. He selects a girl prone to nosebleeds and repeatedly injures his own nose to mimic her condition, creating a false semblance of similarity. Ultimately, his ruse succeeds, and they are paired together, enjoying a deluxe double room and embarking on a yacht. After seeing this, David tries to adapt to these rules. He sets his sights on a woman in the hotel who appears indifferent and even callous. In his pursuit of her, David adopts a facade of apathy and cruelty, disregarding the tragedies around him and resorting to mean-spirited behavior. After they get married, David struggles to maintain his charade, but his deception unravels when the cold woman, suspicious of him, stages a cruel test. She kills David's brother, the dog, and mimics his dying wail. David manages to suppress his grief at first, but breaks down upon discovering his brother's body in the bathroom. The cold woman, now aware of David's deception, attempts to report him to the hotel authorities. However, with the help of the waitress, David evades capture and escapes into the jungle under the cover of night. David spends the night in the jungle, and early the next morning, he is guided to the female leader of the jungle and is told about the do's and don'ts. The leader, skeptical of true love, believes people are inherently selfish and aims to shatter their illusions by testing their loyalty. One day, the leader assigns tasks to David and other celibates experiments aimed at exposing the falsehoods of love among hotel couples. David is assigned to aboard the out of John's family. In front of them, David exposes the truth about John's supposed nosebleeds, revealing that they were faked by banging his head against the wall and using red paint. John appears flustered, but David's wife responds by slapping David across the face and throwing him off the yacht. No one can destroy the stability of their marriage, and they prefer to bury the truth rather than confront it. Even if it's a lie, they are willing to embrace it for the sake of comfort. Later, the leader and other celibates sneak into a hotel room and hold a couple hostage. The leader brandishes a gun and forces the man to choose between killing himself or killing his lover. When the man reluctantly pulls the trigger, the leader smirks triumphantly. People are selfish and tend to betray their partners. This is the absurdity of the partnership rule. Marriages built on fear rather than true love inevitably crumble under pressure. The constraints and compromises imposed by these rules breed apathy and passivity, leaving no room for true love to bud. So, the jungle appears to be a preferable option. Here, one can enjoy nearly complete freedom, singing, eating, sleeping, and even masturbating are all permitted. There are no strict regulations mandating marriage or the pursuit of a partner. Interaction with others is permitted, but limited to ordinary communication, with emotional connections, both physical and mental, strictly prohibited. Even party dancing is permitted, but solely as a solitary activity, with each person dancing alone while wearing headphones and listening to electronic music. Severe penalties are imposed for any violations, such as the punishment of bloody kissing, where the lips of the kissing individuals are severed. In the hotel, freedom to abstain from love is non-existent, while in the jungle, freedom to love is unavailable. What they share in common is a scythe poised to sever any budding affection. However, fate is inherently unpredictable. In the jungle, David unexpectedly finds love. David shares a clandestine romance with the heroine, who is also nearsighted. Despite the intense love they feel, they must conceal their affection in public. Initially, they discreetly express their feelings while out in the city under the guise of handling business, using the pretext of not revealing their celibacy. And then they create a series of gestures and movements that convey their feelings without words. Through these gestures, they communicate, exchange, and express their love openly in front of others. They share private moments, listen to songs together, and synchronize their steps so that even at nightly dances, they could move to the same rhythm without touch. As their love intensifies, David and the heroine entertain the idea of fleeing the jungle and reintegrating into society as a couple. However, their plans are jeopardized when the female leader stumbles upon the heroine's diary, exposing their adulterous affair. The leader devises a cunning yet cruel plan. She coerces the heroine into undergoing myopic surgery but secretly blinds her. This action severs the perceived similarity between David and the heroine, rendering them ineligible for marriage and societal recognition. Enraged, David kidnaps the leader, forces her into a grave he dug, and flees the jungle with his blinded lover. 
apart from their nearsightedness. David and the heroine lack any other apparent commonalities. Despite this, David loves the heroine deeply. With no other recourse, David decides to blind himself as well. He asks the heroine to wait for him in a roadside diner, then heads to the restroom with a knife. Meanwhile, the waiter refills the heroine's water, and she looks directly at the waitress and thanks him. Confusion ensues. It is revealed that the leader did not actually blind the heroine. Rather, she orchestrated a ruse to test David's love. As David contemplates blinding himself, he grapples with a pivotal decision. Escaping the jungle has empowered him to challenge societal norms and sacrifice himself for love. However, the consequences of blinding himself entail sacrificing his freedom to see the world. The movie concludes abruptly, leaving David torn between loving the heroine and preserving his own autonomy. Ultimately, the search for true love persists because loneliness is an enduring aspect of human existence. The contrasting rules of the hotel and the jungle offer two extremes mandatory partnership or complete singularity. David, the protagonist, navigates both sets of rules but struggles to reconcile his desires with societal expectations. If David blinds himself, only to discover the heroine's deception, he'll feel betrayed by her actions. If he refrains from doing so, it validates the leader's theory. In either scenario, they would merely become celibates in another sense, and true love would remain elusive. Does love require similarity? Is tested love true love? Is love born from sacrifice genuine? No freedom, no true love. Throughout the movie, David is submissive, compromising, and passive, continually adapting to the rules imposed upon him, from abandonment to confinement in the hotel, to forced indifference, escape to the jungle, and ultimately, even self-mutilation. The only time he exercises autonomy is when he could choose to become a lobster. A lobster. Because lobsters live for over 100 years, are blue-blooded like aristocrats, and stay fertile all their lives. I also like to see very much. I water ski and swim quite well since I was a teenager. I hope David could refrain from blinding himself. Even if he transforms into a lobster, he can revel in the freedom and tranquility of his beloved ocean, free from societal constraints. Thanks for joining Zombies Cat on this movie. Abduct the subscribe button, hit the bell, and stay me out of this world. Until next time, keep those reels rolling. Zombies Cat signing off.